Hey, this is Thrive. Hey, this is Hell Creamer. Uh, today we will be addressing Firstwick and their Viking weapons video. Uh, Firstwick is a site online that has the most, uh, I mean, I don't even know how to explain it, it is the best Viking. It, it's like an encyclopedia of everything Viking. Yes, we've been using it as a reference for years, ever since Deadliest Warrior, and then this uh, uh, represented the Viking. It was, I mean, it was a terrible episode on that. And we really, we spent a lot of time on the message boards and blogging and, and kind of arguing with these people about it. And we used Hurstwick as our greatest reference point. You know, that oh, and Mike yeah. Lowe's. They, uh, yes, definitely Mike Lowe's. Uh, they uh, basically, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, they reference the sagas, archaeological finds, uh, historical manuscripts, anything that they can get a hold of, and they have like the most excellent site. But today we're addressing Jarl William Short and Jarl Matt Marino of Hurstwick. Yes, their video was excellent, Viking Weapon Tips. We just wanted to address the back edge cut because I think with the proper angle, I know if you hit flat, that'd be great against the bone or something, you know. It's, it, do massive damage anyway, but uh, I think it could have been improved on a little bit. But also the hide was oh yeah, the hide was was almost cured in yeah. a, in a way. It looked I mean, like leather. Like yeah, leather really did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the cuts they made were amazing anyway. Right, anything you did at that point I think was fantastic. But I think we can improve upon that. And I think our goal here for for everybody is to rediscover our heritage and be proud of that heritage. I think you want to do the same thing too. So today, I think what we're here to do is to show you how to improve another upon that ball edge. Yeah, yeah the same cut. Yes. Yeah, and other ways to do it. Uh, also, I wanted to address that you did test butted mail against thrusting, but not riveted mail. I understand you had a coif. We both noticed that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, not eighty, so you couldn't actually just double it up and have double mail on it. It would actually been a fair test, and it was eighteen gauge. I thought that fared very well for eighteen because a lot of it was around 16 gauge. Yeah, 16 riveted. gauge riveted, we'd love we, to see from you guys. You guys can come up with 16 gauge test. for a thrusting yeah. test. Yeah, That's what that would be, that'd be rock star. In fact, anything you guys do so far is, has been stellar and we really enjoy your work. Oh, definitely. We it's just, just want to join with you in, in uh, rediscovering our heritage and so Grant and I are going to kind of walk you through that today. You get a cut. If you pull back, you get a cut. You want the tip. Both backwards and forwards. Okay, now if I don't cut or mess up and draw back and forth, which hopefully I won't, and I do this, I can hit relatively hard and notice there's no blood rising to my skin other than where I shave myself too close and I'm not cutting any veins or arteries. And a little safer on the cloth here, I'm hacking quite hard. And I'm sitting here hacking, I'm hitting pretty dang hard to where it's hurting my leg. But, and it's, okay, and the pose from the old manuals. The blade's back for the leg cut down low. And then the other one, I believe he stood in the same manner and came over hitting it. Now, as you notice, we got a little scoring on the fat here. If I were to throw a shot where it comes in and hits this way and slices, it'll go clean through. I'm going to grab a shield here. And this is one you've seen many times. Beaten to hell, it needs to be rebuilt, but you're going to be doing that soon. So if something went wrong, it would be something like that instead of me hurting myself. Now, if I do the proper cut, like I believe should have been done, uh, we get a little bit of a different effect here. Alrighty, that was just a light blow. That wasn't even hard. That was just the proper motion. Alrighty, this is going to be with a lot more force, hopefully. And we'll see what we can do here. The other one I did light intentionally because I don't want to just destroy our meat because this is all we have. That's why we hung 90 pounds on it with its uh, 12 pounds to make it equal almost what they had in video there of what's resistance. Here we go. I don't know, I think that was a lot worse. Okay, let's examine the damage. And this is for Herstrick. We mean this in the utmost best way. We want you to understand that we're saying we think you could have took that sword and like really laid into that. Um, but see right here, with it's cut, this thing can roll, of course, so we might have got more if this thing was more stationary like a human and didn't give so much and roll around in circles and stuff. But we hit the bone. That's what stopped this whole thing. I feel a bone right here and the scoring on the bone right up in here as it went up at the angle into it. And there you go. That's why we stopped. Uh, Elgamer is going to demonstrate to you the, the uh, strong and the weak of the blade. Now we're going to talk about the tip of the blade or the weak of the blade cutting. So, as you see, I, I can put everything I've got into the tip of this blade. Oh. And I just can't, well, I get a little cut. I put a little strong in there, a little more strong than I needed. 
But yeah, you can't cut with it. It's, it's not, not going to work. It doesn't work. Now, if I accelerated this tip and did what Thran did earlier, then yeah, I could do all that even with this portion of the blade here. That could flay somebody alive. See a good draw cut there. Oh, yeah, that's just nasty. Oh, I hit the bone. I know I did. It's turning my blade now. Oh, wow, that is just awesome. But see, the whole point with this is if somebody had really heavy leather, which, yes, you can slice through leather, but let's say like uh, leather armor, several layers, or any kind of metal, like uh, lamellar, chain, this is not effective. Not really your best bet to waste your time trying to get in and do that unless you're pretty much in a grappling situation and get away with it. But uh, this is not to put down people like uh, the steel ring actors that do that because, yes, this is a devastating attack. If you get this in a joint, correct? Yeah, if you draw under here, it works. Or inside the leg, anywhere. Draw here. If you can get a draw in. Thran, this, I can't emphasize enough how awesome this cut is. Um, but this was a, if I'm not mistaken, a false edge from a downward angle. Am I right? Slightly, yes. Okay. So a slight downward angle. So the question is, what about a slight upward angle? Is there any way you could show us that, Thran? I'd, I'd really like our viewers to see. The... Sure, sure. We okay. got that yow. Do an upward cut just like without the shield, but you're stepping with it. All right, as you're looking here, that was an actual slice, but what stopped this is I was running out of blade and I actually, I could feel the rope as it pulled all these weights down here, which is 90 pounds, and yanked the whole thing. I'm not sure what happens if we get flat with it. Standing here. Yeah, we lost our stuff again. But as you can see, we didn't get much of a cut, did we? We just barely scored the fat, no meat cut, no nothing. All right, I just want to come back one more time and say that if this blade comes straight up and around and just hits flat, no matter how much force you have, which I've been guilty of this too, I, I want to state this, if I'm in a reenactment fight or something and my blade ends up over here or something and somebody's running and I can just cut back, it might not even be a good cut, it just hits. If the guy takes it, he takes it, if he doesn't, he doesn't. But you'd do that in a fight. If all you had was that little motion and that's already extended, you don't have time to draw your arm or anything, the guy's escaping you, you'd hope that maybe it cut or you broke a bone or something through. Let's say you don't have a shield or you have something small that won't stop if you do have like a buckler or something. You pretty much have to step to to get your blade not hitting. It's 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 a it's a common thing, the physics of the blade moving, even if you're letting it cut out, you pretty much have to be in this position because you wouldn't want to accidentally and cut straight into yourself trying to draw and cut. Because of the, the proper speed and force, if you missed, it'd be a really bad accident. Do it. The way I did the cut that made it different is it doesn't matter if this is tight either, it doesn't, you still do the same motion. You stay in close, like you're throwing this, and it comes back. So your slice is this way. It's not really a hack as much as it is a cut. And it can be done low the same way. You're Boom, that's flat. Okay, that's a hack that could cut through bone, you know, over a bone, solid, chop through. But we're going for a cut. So if this thing flicks out, I have to bring it back this way. That's just the way it has to be. Even if it's on the side, I'm drawing it this way. I let my elbow rise out and draw it this way. That's why the shield's here to protect you. If you're stepping with it, it works the same way, but it's doing the same thing. It's coming in this way. That's what I was trying to explain. Hey guys, it's uh, El Gramir. I'm here with Thrand. And uh, I'd like to thank you for watching our video with us. Yeah, Thrand here, uh, doing a little cutting there, finishing that meat off without the tether on the bottom. Yeah, that's got to be really difficult to do with it spinning and spindling a lot more. I mean, we didn't have the extra weights there on the bottom. Yeah, we were having fun. There's me hitting with a little bit of a weird twist cut with the back of the edge. Might not look yeah, like yeah. it, but it's actually hitting, chopping right into the bone. You get close to that in a minute. Yeah, that, that'll be coming up here pretty soon, but, uh, you know, in the meantime, Let's take a minute to thank uh, Jarl William Short and Jarl uh, Matt Marino. Oh um, yes, definitely. That was an excellent video that they did on Viking weapon test. Yeah, um, I'd, I'd have to say that they lit a fire under our asses about three feet high and got us started making videos again, you know? Because I was definitely thinking, wow, I bet if the slice was done a little differently, you know, that it would have been, been different and also if they would have had a uh, better carcass. I think so, yeah. A fresher so, pig carcass would help a lot. 
Um, you know, I have to say Hurstwick, you know, they're one of my favorites. You know, these guys are, are great fellas. Everything on their site is, is you know, it's a gold totally mine. Totally historical. Yes. It's a gold mine. It's a great historical Great site. Viking information and ninth century uh, combat information. No doubt about it. You know, so as you can see there, you got a nice little. It's gonna yeah, I think we're gonna get a little close up here in a second of that bone. Yeah, that's that's oh, yeah. Each, each shot I hit was all with the edge. It's kind of hard to tell at that angle in the video because we're playing around and like taking it seriously. But you can see how the cuts are deep into the actual bone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That's shoulder that would have screwed that up for sure. Oh look, oh, here we go. The day Showing after. a little leg, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. That's a bruising that I got from hitting myself. In case anybody thinks I wasn't hitting myself hard with that unmovable piece of But, iron. you know, I think the, the, the difficult thing when sharp. you're filming is that people don't really... Oh, Thran. Oh, sorry, I couldn't yeah. resist. It was just funny. <laughs> no, look, you didn't even like the taste of that 